In this lecture, we're going to go over the basic tools and interface of Photoshop. Now, if you're already familiar with Photoshop, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the next lecture. If you're not familiar with Photoshop, stick around and we're going to learn some really cool things. So the first tool we want to go over in Photoshop is the grab and move tool. That tool is the tool right here up in the top left corner of our toolbar. So if we go ahead and select that, what we can do now is we can click and drag our document around. So if we click and drag, it doesn't allow us to do that because our background layer is locked. So let's hit OK. The way we unlock that layer is by coming over here to our layers panel at the bottom right side of our screen. And there's a little lock icon on this background layer. So we're going to go ahead and hit that lock icon. And now that's unlocked that layer. So now we can click and drag our background around like so. Now you'll see back here that this background area has a white and gray checkered pattern. That means that that area is transparent, meaning that it's see-through. Now let's go ahead and undo that move by coming up to edit, then coming down to step backwards or undo move. The next tool we're going to go over is the marquee tool. So if we come over to this tool right next to our grab and move tool, we can go ahead and click and drag and that will make a rectangular selection like so. And now what we can do is we can switch back over to our grab and move tool and click and drag that around. Now let's go ahead and undo that. So we'll go edit, undo move. Now there are two different marquee tools we'll be using. There's the rectangular one. Then if we click and hold down on that, you'll see that we have an elliptical marquee tool also. So let's select that. And now we can click and drag just like we do with the rectangular marquee tool, but this time it makes an elliptical selection. So now if I grab my grab and move tool, I can click and drag that around. Let's undo that. The next tool we're going to go over is the lasso tool. So right now it's on the polygonal lasso tool. And what the polygonal lasso tool does is it allows you to click in one spot, then click in another spot, and it'll create a line from one point to the other. We can click around our page to create whatever shape we like. Then we can connect it at the end. And now that's just created a selection. So let's use our grab and move tool to move that around. Perfect. Now, the reason why you might use this is because let's say we wanted to cut something out. We can click, 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 and we can click all the way around this object until we get it completely cut out. Now, obviously you'd want to really take your time and zoom in there so you make sure you're right on the edge, but you'll see now we can go ahead and grab and move that out of the way. Now, the second lasso tool is going to be our regular lasso tool. So if we click and hold down on this polygonal lasso tool, you'll see we have this one that looks like a lasso, kind of like a cowboy's lasso. So let's select that. And this allows us to draw our selection. So rather than clicking from point to point to create our selection, we can create very organic shapes by just drawing it out. And then we can grab and move that around. You might use this if you want to select an organic shape and you want to do it quickly. So let's say that we wanted to select this tree. We could quickly draw around it like so, and then we could grab and move that. The next tool we're going to go over is the eyedropper tool. So that's this tool right here. So let's go ahead and select that. And like I said before, this is the tool that we're going to use to select colors on an image. So you'll see when I just clicked there, it changed my color over here to that color. If I select this color down here, it changes to that color. So this is extremely useful, especially if you want to select colors off of somebody else's artwork so that you can use their same color scheme. It's also useful if you need to come back and select one of the colors in your artwork and you need it to be the exact same color. The next tool we're going to go over is the brush tool. So that's the tool right underneath the eyedropper tool. So let's go ahead and select that. And now what I can do is I can use it just like a normal paintbrush and I can paint anything I want in like so. Now you can also change the size and the setting of your brush by coming up to this little paint can here, selecting that, and now you see you get all these different brush types. So let's try painting with this one now. So you'll see that brush has a completely different look. You can also change the size by sliding this bar up and down. And you can also change the spacing, but we're not going to worry about the spacing right now. 
The next tool we're going to go over is the erase tool. So the erase tool is right down here. It looks like an eraser. Let's go ahead and select that. And now it's just like a brush tool. We can select whatever brush we want to erase with. So I'm going to select this one right here. It's sort of a paintbrush type of brush. And now you see that erases that away. And we get that checkered pattern behind it because that means that it's transparent or see-through. The next tool we're going to go over is the paint bucket tool. So if we come over to this icon right next to our eraser, we can go ahead and select that. And what we can do with this is we can fill in colors or entire selections. So for example, if I try to color in this bottom area, like so, it's going to fill in any colors that are within the range of this blue. Now I can change my tolerance up here. So right now it's set to zero. So that means it's only filling in colors that are the exact same blue as the blue that I clicked on. I can change that to a tolerance of 70 up here at the top. And then I can go ahead and try that again and you'll see it fills in a lot more. The tolerance allows you to fill in colors that are pretty similar but not exactly the same. The higher the tolerance, the more colors it's gonna fill in. The next tool we'll go over is the gradient tool. So if we hold down on the paint bucket tool, you'll see we get this gradient tool right here on this menu. So let's go ahead and select that. Now what we can do with the gradient tool is we can create a gradient from one color to another. So right now we have our color set to black and yellow. So if I click here and then drag all the way over here, you see we extend this line all the way across our screen. Once I let go, it creates that gradient all the way across. Now I'm going to undo that and you'll see if I make that line a little bit shorter, the line is representing the distance of where that gradient is going to happen. So if I let go there, you'll see the gradient is much shorter and then everything on the other side of those two points becomes that solid color. The next tool we're going to go over is the zoom tool. So if we come down here to this little icon that looks like a magnifying glass, let's go ahead and select that. And now if we click and drag right on our screen, it allows us to zoom in. And if we drag a left, it zooms out. So this is super useful if you want to get in really close to your image. And it's also super useful if you want to zoom out to see how your image looks from far away. Also, if you click once, it'll zoom it in to a standard percentage. So right now it zoomed it in to 25%. If we click again, it goes to 33%, 50%, 66%, and 100%. So very often I'll zoom it into 100% just to see how our image will look at 100% of its scale. Next, let's go over our color picker. So over here we have our two colors. This is our background color and the black is our foreground color. So anytime something uses the background color, it's going to take from this color right here. So if I create a new document and I have this set as my background color, that's going to be the color of my background. This black color is going to be the color that my tools use as the primary color in their job. So for example, the brush tool is going to use this black color and not this yellow color. Now I can switch these two colors back and forth by hitting these two little arrows right here, and that'll allow me to switch between those two. That's really useful if you want to switch between two colors really quickly. Now the way you change your color is by hitting the color and then we can come over here to our color picker window and drag this little point wherever we want. So if I drag it up to the blue, you'll see here my new color is this light baby blue. And you can also see the current color, so you can compare the two colors. So let's say that this is our original color, the black, and we want to get a little bit lighter version of that, but we want to see how they look together because we're going to paint them one next to the other. So what we can do is we can look over here and see how those look together. So if I wanted about there, then I could go ahead and hit OK. And now it's changed that color to the color that I want. That brings us to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, you learned how to use a bunch of new tools in Photoshop. So the first one you learned how to use was the grab and move tool. Then you learned how to use the marquee tool, which allows you to make selections, which you can then grab and move with your grab and move tool. Then you learned how to use the lasso tool, which allows you to create organic selections. Then you learn how to use the eyedropper tool, which allows you to select any color you want from an image. Then you learn how to use the paintbrush tool. You also learn how to control the settings of your paintbrush tool and change the brush type. You then learn how to use the erase tool, which you also were able to use the different brush settings on. Then you learn how to use the paint bucket fill tool and the gradient tool. 
which allows you to fill in spaces with either a solid color or a gradient. Then you learned how to zoom in and out of your document. And lastly, you learned how to select different colors using your color picker window. Thanks for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.